<laughs> but notice he says here, are all prophets? No. Are all teachers? No. Are all workers of miracles? No. Now, it's not saying they all can't. So you See, people read that and go, oh, see, everybody can't do miracles. It doesn't say that. It says, do all do miracles? No. D- does everybody in here do miracles? No. Can everybody in here do miracles? Yeah. Why? If you, have the, if you have the Spirit of God, you can do them as necessary, but you have to step out. You have to decide. You have to desire, and then you pursue, or pursue and then desire, pursue love and then desire, but you can desire, and if you desire something, you're going to pursue that thing, and God will use you. See, that's how we teach healing. Why? We teach people how to minister healing. So it's not that God doesn't want you to. When he asks these questions, he's not saying you can't. He just says, does everybody do that? Well, does everybody in the body of Christ speak in tongues? No. Right? Why? But does, would Paul here say, would he want everybody speaking in tongues? Yeah. Everybody, he wanted everybody in the whole church speaking in tongues. Right? Then he says, have all the gifts of healing? The answer, obviously, is no. Yeah? But could all minister healing? Absolutely. But see, you can minister by a gift or you can minister by faith. So you don't have to have a gift to minister healing. You can minister healing by faith, and there are times when a gift of healing will kick in whenever you need it. A lot of times he'll kick in and he'll do certain things, but you can do anything by faith, right? And don't have to have a gift to do it. Usually if you have to have a gift to make it happen, it's because your faith is not developed in that. You may have enough faith to step out, but not faith in that thing for it to happen. And if you have faith to step out, usually that's where a gift, and don't, let me say it right. If you have faith to step out, but don't have faith to accomplish the thing, then that's when a gift comes in. And the Holy Spirit will kick in that gift, and he'll fix it. Smith Wigglesworth said that he, he stretches his faith as far as he can get it, and if he doesn't have enough faith, that God has nine gifts of the Spirit he can tack on to the end of his faith. See? And so you, don't, you might not have the faith to do that thing, but you might have faith to step out, believing that God wants to help people or something, and then that gift will kick in. Other times, now, honestly, usually that is because the person is carnally minded. See, you only find the definition of the gifts to the most carnally minded church in the Bible. You don't find them in the book of Ephesians, the glorious church, the spiritual church. You don't find it there. Why? Because they were, what do you find there? That we walk in the fullness of the Spirit. See, when you walk in the fullness of the Spirit, gifts operate, but you don't pay attention to the gifts. You're paying attention to the fullness of the Spirit in the sense that you're just trying to help people and know God wants to. Carnal people go, look at my gift. I got this gift, I got that gift, and now I'm working on my third gift. I'm ready, I'm, I'm going to get to it. No. See, a spiritual person just looks and goes, oh, God is amazing. He's got the answer. That person has a need. Let me connect them. And then you just step out and be that connection. So you're not thinking about gifts. Now, understand, though, he was talking to carnal people when he said, uh, pursue the gifts. Okay? Nothing wrong with that. Now, if you're not operating in gifts, that would apply. Pursue the gifts. Go after that. Understand how they, are, how they, how they work and how they operate in your life. Because there's different ways each one can work. If you went to a William Branham meeting, you would have got healed usually through a word of knowledge. He would tell you what you got, pretty much quote your doctor's report, never even see it. But God would tell him all that stuff, and then he'd say a simple thing. Now, if God knows all that about you, don't you think he loves you enough to heal you? And that person would be standing there just crying because he just read their mail. And, and he'd say, okay, go your way, you're healed. Why? Because he was operating in a word of knowledge. He healed the sick with a word of knowledge, not technically a gift of healing. But then you look at A. A. Allen, and he now he had a gift, well, especially Jack Coe just had a, a gift of faith. And with faith, he got people healed. Grabbing them, jerking them around, and <laughs> pulling them out of wheelchairs. Now some of that, now see, and some of that too, see, the gift of faith is really faith in God. And he'll say, okay, do this. Bend over. Do this. You can't touch it? Okay. Why? You got back, bend over. He tells, see, because faith, faith doesn't, Faith stands still and watches God perform. See? But now, so I wasn't going to do a seminar on tongue, or on uh, spiritual gifts. I guess we are. Um, so, but now you take somebody like A. Allen, and he had a 
gift of the working of miracles. Why? Because he had to actually work things. He would pull the people out of the wheelchair, pull them up off of the stretcher. See, that's the working of miracles. It's not a gift of miracles. It's the gift of the working of miracles, which means you've got to do something to work it, right? And there's a part where you play in that, which means you step out. You, you do uh, Acts chapter 3. Now, the credit there for the man that got healed, the lame man, was the name of Jesus. And, of course, that's how everything gets done. But look how Peter got the man healed. He reached down, took him by the right hand. He told the man, stand up. And then he took him by the right hand and lifted him, working of miracles. When he did that, now he did it in the name of Jesus. So the authority and the power was there. But the, he, when he did the working of miracles, the miracle worked. And so there's differences. So faith doesn't always have to do something. Faith trusts God and watches and healed. Faith, well, it does something. It decrees. And so that's why every time Jesus talked about faith, he was always talking about saying something. Why? Because faith decrees. But then if there's a work in miracles. Now there's gifts of healings. Gifts, plural, of healings, plural. Every healing is a gift in and of itself. Right? And, and it's not one gift of healing. It's gifts, plural. And then there's differences of operations and there's diversities of administration, all these different ways that each thing can be worked. So you can get healed through all kinds of different, any, any gift of the Spirit can get somebody healed. Any gift of the Spirit can get somebody saved. Right? You start ministering in the gift of the Word of Knowledge, people tend to get saved. Why? Because you're reading their, you know, reading their mail, as we say. So you, if, but you'll flow in certain ways. But now the, the key is, he says, desire spiritual gifts, which means all of them. Okay? But rather that you may prophesy. In other words, if you're going to focus on one, why? Because prophesying is like the beginning. So you get tongues, usually with the baptism of the Spirit, automatically you'll get tongues, you'll start speaking in tongues. That edifies you and builds you up, right? So that you're ready to release the power and the life of God into a person's spirit and into their flesh. And you're ready to release it. By praying in tongues, you get built up in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. That's how you, that's one of the ways to get built up. The other is to acknowledge every good thing that is in you in Christ Jesus. You start acknowledging that and you, he gets stirred up. And what are you doing? You're doing what Paul told Timothy, stir up the gift that's in you. And so you get him all stirred up, he's ready to be released. And then now, how do you start? Now, notice you get built up and ready to release, but then you st- he wants you to start because prophecy is the main one that edifies the church. So he didn't want you to get built up and all fired up and self-important. He wants you to get fired up, and then he wants you to prophesy so you edify others, others first. And then now you're all built up, and whenever you start prophesying, then the gifts kick in, and now you're ready to release, and that person gets everything they need. Do you understand that? So you, you put it on them first. In other words, now you, you should be first partaker of what you've got. So if you're going to be ministering healing, you should be healed. Now, now you don't wait till you're healed to minister healing, but you should be healed. We, why? We ought to be partakers of what we got, right? And if you're going to give something, if you can give it, you can get it, amen, for yourself. And so there has to be that flow. Now, 